Hey, Justin here with Stay at Home Dads Podcast. Welcome to this place I talk about everything from kids and family, a lot of dad stuff, guy stuff, interesting topics, and did I mention dad stuff? Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. All right, so I want to reflect a little bit today. Christmas just got over. Hope everyone had a wonderful time with family and presents and all that stuff. The year's winding down, so who knows? Maybe that's why I'm getting a little sentimental and, you know, kind of hanging up on a lot of stuff, but oh well. I've been doing this podcast for almost two years, so I just want to kind of explain maybe what I do here, maybe even why I do it, sort of just a end of the year cap or something like that. Honestly, it's a show that nobody really asked for. So I learn every week right here when I do this show with you guys. I go through my week, I take care of my kids, doing things around my house, taking care of, you know, the the silly things, the standard stay-at-home parent stuff, you know, thinking about life, and then something strikes me or comes into my head, something on TV that I see or something that I read or something my kids said or something that they do. It's just some thought that makes me ask myself a question or makes me really ask why or or intrigues me in a way, and that makes me kind of want to dig a little deeper. So I write it down, I write down little notes, little things that come into my head, I go look it up, a lot of times it's something that I'm dealing with in my own life that I'm struggling with, or even just a random thought, like I said, but I do a bunch of reading and searching and going on the internet to learn about whatever that may be, and then I write down my thoughts, and I write down all that stuff into a show, bullet points, things I want to talk about and I don't want to forget. I just type all this stuff out and then I come on here and I relay it to you, hopefully in a clear and concise manner. And hopefully it's not too boring or useless. So is that the right way to do this? I have no idea. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe there would be a better way. Maybe I should do it a little bit more off the cuff and a little bit more natural, but... Sometimes that's difficult to do. And I've had a few guests in here as well. Not very many, but a few. And I know the show can get a little blog-esque. Just like a mundane recap of my life and my personal situations. Which I know, that could be kind of hard for you to listen to some days. But sometimes that can be kind of therapeutic for me. To really talk through those things and express them on here. And I don't necessarily always want it to be that way. I do want to talk about things that you're interested in or things that bring value to your life or your parenting style, but sometimes I just get kind of personal on how I feel or what I'm dealing with, and I also want to show you that maybe you're not alone in how you feel or things that you're struggling with. I know guys are pretty good at burying things and just shoving things down on how they feel or how they deal with certain situations. And it's just kind of nice to talk about that here and get it out there for you to listen to. And I know I keep talking about having more guests to talk about all these issues that I talk about here. Someone who can add their professional opinion to a lot of these topics instead of me just reciting silly articles. I know that's probably not the best way to do that. And I know I need to be more consistent with that. But it's kind of hard to make that happen sometimes. I'll be honest. It's... It's hard to get people to commit, or it's more of a thing of me getting out of my own way to actually ask people to come on here. I don't know about you, but I was never a great public speaker growing up, even as an adult. I dreaded it. I still dread it. Even in college, doing presentations, that was not my favorite aspect of class. Having all this knowledge that you've studied and learned, and then trying to stand up in front of a bunch of people and expressing it, and stumbling over the speech or the presentation. Just, ugh, like, I don't like doing that. So yeah, here I am, 40 years old, and it still feels weird for me to do something like that, or even in this this small scenario, this small case here, have one-on-one conversations with strangers, or even friends at times. It's just kind of weird, kind of embarrassing. Just uh, makes me very nervous, I guess. And I don't really know why. It's kind of silly to think that it makes me nervous to sit down and talk to some good friend of mine, but it does. 
And then plus all the show prep and having a great topic, having great questions loaded up and ready to go for the guest. I kind of stress about a lot of that stuff. And then having or trying to have an intelligent conversation with somebody and it doesn't sound like just some snore fest that puts everybody to sleep. You know, like, I don't know, like ninth grade biology class or something. But once I start, even with the guests I've had already, it usually goes pretty well. It flows pretty well, and I have a really good time. But it's always that getting started and that apprehension before it actually begins. I mean, I don't know how people do it. Manage people, have clients, and deal with them, present things to them, lead teams and groups and meetings. My wife can do that stuff. She is... She's amazing at that stuff. She can orchestrate a whole meeting, 40, 50, 60 people. She can present things and have slides done and and talk very professionally about all this stuff. It's just crazy. It really it really impresses me, that's for sure, how she can just command a room like that. I can't do that. I've never done that. I've always had jobs where I either A, work by myself or have a small team of people that I manage two or three or four people. It's never been on a large scale. So maybe that's why that kind of scares me a little bit. But yeah, that's my process on coming up with content and doing all that stuff. I couldn't imagine doing a daily show, that's for sure. Granted, I think people that actually do a daily show, they have a whole team of people behind them helping them with content prep and and what to talk about and editing and all that stuff, I do it all myself as it is right now. And that can get a little overwhelming at times, even just doing a weekly show, trying to think of a decent topic myself, write down all my thoughts, don't sound like an ums and buts and whatever moron and not know what the hell I'm talking about, and then record a show, edit the show, then upload the show, and fill out all the other shit on the thing so people know what the show is about. Yeah, I struggle with that. I really do. Plus, watch my kids and take care of my house all at the same time. So, yeah, it can get a lot even just doing one show. And I'm not really sure, but is this how a lot of other podcasters do it? Maybe I'm making more work for myself in the way that I'm doing it. It even sounds weird calling myself a quote-unquote podcaster. I don't really think of myself in that matter. I just think I'm some blue-collar dude that transitioned from work to raising kids every day, and I record conversations with myself. It sounds kind of ridiculous, but yeah. And all this is on the fly, too. I'm trying to teach myself how to do this, as well as not plop my kids in front of a screen or a TV every time I want to work on this little project. So that kind of goes in with that balancing thing and trying to cover all my bases like I mentioned earlier. Oh, and the level of content. That's another thing that I worry about all the time. Am I even talking about things that people care about? Am I helping anyone? Am I providing any value at all? I really want to. I strive to and I try to. So if I'm not or If you guys have something else you would like me to talk about or something I can add in here that would make this whole process better, please send me a message and let me know. I'm all ears. So like I said, I'm just learning on the fly as I go. But that's my goal is just to provide that to you, to my listener. And I know some of these episodes are probably pretty painful to trudge through. Maybe even this episode is probably painful to trudge through because I know I can get a little too bloggy, like I said audio blog type thing, too personal, too about just me and not something that helps you. But people are always interested in other people's lives, aren't they? That's what I've heard anyways. I've heard that people think they have boring lives, but someone else out there thinks what you're doing is amazing. So I don't know. Maybe we should all give ourselves a little bit of credit. But yeah, I'm no expert. That's why I'm just trying to be transparent and honest and let you know how I kind of do things. It's all a learning process for me, and I don't want to pretend like I know exactly what I'm doing. I'd rather share how I do things and share my learning experience and what I've done and how I'm getting to where I'm getting with you than just bullshitting my way through it and being fake, I guess. 
not to get too philosophical, but it's kind of like life in a way, or being a parent. You just kind of figure it out as we go along. I talked to a friend of mine on Christmas Eve. She has two grown children, and we were just chit-chatting at a little gathering. We had a great conversation about parenting and trust and, and kids getting older. Her kids are off to college now, so it was kind of like maybe a scenario of what my future will look like at some point. They were empty nesters, just freshly empty nesters. Her kids, one was 21 and the other one just went to his first year of college. So it's kind of interesting to see like my future in that aspect. And we talked about kids getting out there and being responsible for themselves and eventually going off and no longer being looked after by the parents or being, I don't know what the right word is, not controlled. We're not controlling our kids, but no longer, them no longer being under our rule, I guess, something like that. And we mentioned that we don't know if the choices we make as parents when our kids are growing up are really the right choices until they're already over. And then you can kind of see the fruits of your labor, so to speak, as your kids make right choices and go out on their own and do their own thing. And it's just kind of an interesting conversation I had. I thought I'd mention that. And that's the thing, though, is I'm learning. I'm self-taught, like I said. I didn't know how to use any of these programs, GarageBand or other editing things, before I ever started this. How to even submit a podcast on Spotify or get something on Apple Podcasts. I had no idea, and I just started searching and reading and, you know, figuring it out. And that's actually how I learned how to be a diesel mechanic, too, when I had a professional job working in shops and managing a few people. I mean, granted, I worked with a lot of great guys. They shared their knowledge with me. They helped me prosper and learn. And I just stayed in those situations working under other people and just absorbing as much knowledge as I could. But a lot of it, too, was on the fly, trial and error, and just working through things and figuring it out on my own. And then if I had a a big question or something important, I could ask one of my colleagues, and then they would either show me or we would brainstorm together. And that's, that's how I learned how to be a really good diesel mechanic. I think firsthand experience is where you're going to learn how to do whatever it is you want to do. I think that's the best way to do it. And I'm not trying to shit on college by any means. I went to college even, but isn't on the job training and learning while doing going to be a necessity with any job, schooling or not? Now, had I gone to college for marketing or business or something related to what I'm doing instead of how to draw models in a computer, then maybe I would have known how to do this podcast stuff and market my podcast and get my content out there much better, maybe. I don't know. And speaking of self-taught, I think anyone can almost, almost learn anything that they want to learn about any other type of career or job. Working with somebody else, learning online maybe, onboarding programs or something like that. Kind of like Elon said, didn't he say that? That you can just look up whatever you want to look up online now and and learn it. You don't necessarily need to go to college. Like I said, I'm not dumping on college, but I don't know, interesting kind of thought. And I don't know why I'm going off on this kind of jag, but I am. I really do think that. People helped me learn how to do a lot in my blue-collar diesel mechanic world. Diagnose, disassemble, reassemble engines and transmissions and other systems, you know, all that automotive stuff. And I became quite good at it in not that long of a time. I think I was only working for seven or eight years in that industry, and I felt very competent in that type of work. And I think someone could do that same thing in, and maybe they do, maybe I'm just naive, but maybe that is how it works. They could do that in a a sales job or a marketing job or carpentry work or building things with your hands or whatever it may be, just that on the job, learn on the fly, learn as you go type of scenario. And sure, there's going to be some sort of skills and jobs that are difficult to learn or may take years to become very good at and you would be better off, like I said, going to college and, and taking classes and being much more well prepared to do those. But I don't think it's impossible. I think you just need to be ambitious and 
willing to learn and be patient too and not think you're going to jump to the top of the ladder in a very short period of time. So does college really carry the weight that it once did? And sure, it's absolutely necessary and needed for certain careers. Like like I said, don't get me wrong, I'm not anti-college or anything like that. I'm just just thinking out loud here. I mean, I don't think I want a doctor that is a doctor because he watched YouTube videos. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't want my dentist to be filling fillings that he learned how to do on TikTok. You know, kind of scary. And I know I've talked about college in the past and the cost and all that stuff. And if you haven't heard that episode, go back and check it out. I don't know when it was, but check it out and listen to it. And I still don't know why I brought this up. I don't know why I went down this rabbit hole. I mean, I was talking about end of the year recap, and then I went down this rabbit hole of college, and I don't know, lost all train of thought. And see, that's kind of the thing that I do, and I don't intend to, and then it changes everything, and then that content quality changes, and I don't know, tangent, tangent. Anyways, and speaking of self-taught and working jobs and doing what I do now and kind of reflecting on that aspect a little bit, I kind of want to talk about happiness and success real quick. I watch a lot of motivational clips and videos sometimes on social media, maybe too many of them at times, but I saw one from Gary V. He's a popular social media marketing guy. You probably heard of him. Always talks about crushing it and hustles and grinds and and happiness and everything. But I saw this clip and I thought it was kind of interesting. So let me play that for you real quick. Seven billion people need to change the conversation of what success looks like. It is not to make a billion dollars. It is to actually wake up in the morning and be in a good mood. How about people in here realizing that they have a job that might pay them a little bit more than something else, but they hate it, but they're not willing to live in a more humble home or drive a more humble car. And so they have a miserable job just to pay for shit that they have to impress other people that they don't even like. How about that fucking conversation? The problem is everybody thinks you have to make a billion. And the problem is nobody has humility to live a hundred thousand dollar lifestyle You need to figure out that for you not what your parents think not what I think not what the comments think you So what do you think of that? I know success looks different for Everyone we all have our idea of success or what we want or what we want to be Or what we want to be doing or what we want to own even But like he said, it doesn't have to be this one-lane thing in this, I want to make a billion dollars, that's my happy place, that's my idea of success. Which is fine if it is, but I think if you think that way, you're going to miss out on other things in your life. You're going to miss out on other areas that should really, you should think of as being successful, and you're not. You're just thinking of that one thing. Does that make sense? Success doesn't always have to be being recognized, being famous, having a billion dollars. I think success is like an optics thing. Would you agree? Kind of like he said, we want to be perceived by our peers as successful, by the fancy car and the huge house and the fancy watch or whatever it is. We want that feedback from our friends and our enemies probably that look at that guy, he's making it, he's whatever. And sure, we have our professional goals we have. We have moving up in a company, getting the name on the door, getting a promotion, getting a a raise, climbing the corporate ladder, which is all fine and dandy. That's good. I mean, that's normal for a lot of people. But the bar always seems to be moving, too. And I don't know if I've talked about this before, but it's always the goalposts are always moving. We get to that one point, and then we move the goalposts. And then we work hard and we get to that goalposts and then we move them again, just out of reach to a new goal. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. I actually think maybe it's kind of good in a way to always be striving for something, to always be learning and evolving. There's always this consensus to be content with what you have and just be humble with where you're at, which is good too. But I think it's also good to keep growing and learning and advancing and not only in your career but in your life too like always keep learning new things they're going to be hard but learn new things learn how to play piano learn how to drive a stick shift car I don't know just to keep learning things keep learning new things for your job as well but 
like I said, success can be being there for your kids. Success can be raising happy daughters, going to baseball games, being there for the tough times when they get bullied at school, being your wife's rock when she's going through some shit, you know, making breakfast for the family on Sunday. Uh, Like Gary said, waking up in a good mood, waking up and being proud of what you what you have and we have to all go out and figure out that formula for ourselves i think of this little meme or whatever that was out probably quite a while ago it's probably all over the place it shows a guy with no money and he's poor right but then that guy looks at this other guy who has a thousand dollars and that guy looks rich to him like oh my gosh you've got a thousand dollars but the guy with a thousand dollars he feels poor in relation to the guy that has $10,000. He looks rich, you know? And then it just keeps going, and so on, and so on, and so on, down the line. And what success is looks different to everyone. Like my buddy TJ, who I talked to a couple months ago, fishing guide, business guy. Is he making millions and millions of dollars? Is he, is he busting at the seams with money? No. But does he get to wake up every day and go do something that he absolutely loves that pays him enough money to take care of his family. Absolutely. And I think that something like that is success. That is happiness. And then you can have goals there too, just like my buddy said. Oh, he wants to expand, get more boats, get more guides, do more stuff. That's his goalpost, you know? And I think that's, I don't know, I just think that's kind of cool. And I myself, I've got a very lucky situation. I've got a great dynamic with my wife. She works, and she's able to provide for our family and give us everything that we need to have a great life. And I get to take care of my kids and do these domestic duties, so to speak, which I have fallen into quite well, I think. I keep doing more and more all the time and learning more and more in that aspect. Things that I didn't do a whole bunch the first year, I'm stepping into and doing more now. So it's just, that's even a learning experience in itself. And maybe one day I'll turn this whole little project I'm doing here into something more. But at least right now, I get to watch my kids grow, and I get to talk to you. So yeah, I would say that I am successful, that I am happy with where I'm at. So, as far as next year goes, now that I am done with all my tangents and side jags and whatever else I'm talking about today, I guess... Expect the same style of content here and there. This is not going to be some overnight thing, but I'm going to put a lot more effort into talking to people instead of talking about articles. I want to have amazing conversations about stories and careers and kids and all that stuff with a lot of other people, stuff that you can relate to and Maybe I will go back to work here at some point, and then this will all morph into something else. I don't really know. I can't tell what the future holds. It's kind of funny, though. I know what I have to do to make this a better show. We all know what has to be done to achieve whatever we're after, right? I know what I have to do. I mean, it's, it's obvious. But we can sit here and complain and stew and think about it, and that doesn't get us anywhere. We actually have to do it. We have to try. We have to just tell ourselves to do that thing. And you know what? If it fails, it fails. Now we know what not to do anyways. So it's just the application. I think that is the hardest part, just getting out there and just doing it. So that's my goal. That's my goal is to talk to more people, get more people in here, have more fun, maybe not be so damn serious all the time, inject a little bit of humor into this damn thing. Maybe that's what I'm going to do. Anyways, I just really want to thank you for listening to me, especially wax on about all this different nonsense today. I really do appreciate it, especially if you stuck with this episode until this point. Thank you. If you have any questions or comments for me, please feel free to reach out on my social media at Vegas Raymer on Instagram, or you can jump over to podbean.com. Shoot me a message. Let me know what you think. Do you have any topics that you would like me to talk about? Do you have any people that you would like me to talk to? Let me know. I'm all ears. Also, you can follow me over on podme.com. You can hit a little follow button, so please do that. And uh, that's it. I hope everyone has a wonderful New Year's. Stay safe. 
don't uh, don't drink too much, don't party too much, and I will talk to you in 2023.